Wait, All closer. right, uh, gassed up part six, I believe. Uh, we're making progress here today. Today we are on Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C., United States Capitol right behind us. And uh, I'm here with my man Sterling. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet Sterling because uh, he's a co-worker of my uncle's. And he's a bit cooler, I have to say. So you are not my uncle. So. Not true. Uh, but also, I realized that you were a former football player for Yale. And so, yeah. So that's, that's kind of the whole point of my podcast is just getting to know athletes and seeing how they excelled, you know, and uh, kind of just what the experience was like. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, yeah, so first, how did you get into Yale football? So, growing up, I thought I was going to be a basketball player. Okay. Um, I've been the same height since I was in, like, seventh or eighth grade, oh, okay. and, like, okay. basketball was the first sport that I that I ever fell in love with, per se. Yeah. Um, and then going into my sophomore year of high school mm -hmm. um, two years after I started playing tackle football I, yeah. I played flag growing up I okay. played tackle until high school Okay. Um, going into my sophomore year I was getting ready to play tight end for the JV team and then had a bunch of injuries in the summer going into sophomore year mm -hmm. and my coach basically asked me he said you can play JV tight end yeah. um, and then only play defense your junior year because okay. there's a kid in the grade above you who's a really good tight end and we only run a, a one tight end system Yeah. <clears throat> or you can join the varsity team play offensive line as a sophomore and we'll kind of see where it goes in terms of your developmental curve and yeah. so I was like okay let's let's play uh, let's play offensive line I was like real twig skinny uh, yeah. but jumped at the, the opportunity to be able to play varsity ball when I okay. was a sophomore and then from there continued playing offensive line obviously my through the rest of high school and my junior yeah. year uh, we had a, a class of really good seniors in the grade above me and a number of those guys got recruited to play um, at FBS schools and oh, so nice. that was how I think a lot of coaches first uh started paying attention to me. I was kind of riding yeah. on the coattails of yeah. guys who were older than I was. And, and so what high school did you go to? I went to Camp Alindo High School. It's okay. in Moraga, California. California. And yeah. how did Yale reach out to you? Was so Email, phone call? Yeah. Um, it's a great question, actually. I need to think about that. I think um, the first time I ever visited Yale was to, to go to their basketball camp to try to get recruited uh, okay. after my sophomore year okay and when I was there I reached out to a coach on the football team yeah. it was like one of their recruiting assistants yeah and they showed me around um, after that uh, they put me in touch with the area recruiter um, from um, for the Bay Area mm -hmm. named, uh, his name's Paul Rice he's a coach of Columbia now okay and then we didn't talk for probably 18 months almost and then after my junior season when I started getting scholarship offers from FBS schools yeah. um, he hit me up again and it was over Twitter oh um, Twitter okay. yeah so interestingly enough I think this rule has been changed but uh, when I was in high school you couldn't text recruits until a certain date in their junior year uh -huh. but there was like a essentially like a technicality loophole where coaches could contact you on social media. And was that through DM? Yep, exactly. Okay. So just DM me on Twitter. Um, and that was how the recruiting process went for me with probably 85, 90% yeah. of the schools I talked to. And so did they send any emojis on Twitter? Any, yeah. Uh, ah! well, what's a Yale mascot? Like, Bulldog. Uh, on Bulldogs. Yeah, Bulldogs. You know yeah. what? I wouldn't have put it past the coaching staff. So my O-line coach, who I ended up talking to, he's been there recruiting process, yeah. Joe Conlon. Okay. He's the head coach at Fordham now. Okay. No emojis from him. No emojis. Uh, okay. Certainly not. Straight but, to the point. Yeah. Coach Rice and some of the other coaches, definitely like the recruiting assistants who would message from the main the main account. Yeah. They probably okay. used a couple of emojis. And so you didn't get any, like, yo, you're fire on Huddle or whatever, uh, some fire emojis or uh, anything like that. <sighs> Yeah, like there are there are one or two of those <laughs> moments which are always a little strange, but they're yeah. usually from like the like college intern yeah. who's like bed being told to just go blast into folks' yeah, DMs. Okay, okay. Uh, but those are still fun. 
And so let's move to Yale. What was like your first week of football practice like? Like were you shocked at how at the step to college or were you like for yeah. Ivy's this isn't as competitive as I thought or So our first uh, week on campus is pretty far before football actually starts. Mm-hmm. So we come out uh, on on July 3rd, I think, one day okay. before the 4th of July. Okay. And we do summer workouts all through July, through most of August, yeah. and uh, and then the season starts, or camp starts in mid-August. Okay. And the, what they did, um, Yale, the Ivy League cannot offer athletic scholarships, mm-hmm. so we all needed to like pay our rent and pay our way through the summer. Oh, damn. And so we got assigned jobs that we worked uh, during the summer before workouts. And so like, we had probably 29 kids in our recruiting class. Probably 20 of us worked at uh, the New Haven Police Athletic League. Camp oh, nice. Because they had a relationship with our head coach. Cool. Uh, and so basically it was like, wake up at, call it six. Yeah. Uh, go eat big old breakfast. I'm trying to get, I gained like 50 pounds between March of my senior year of high school and yeah. that July 3rd. Damn. So, uh, just That's crazy. eat a whole lot. Yeah. Um, eat a bunch of breakfast, then go run around with these kids. Uh, I was with the nine year olds. Okay. Um, run around with the nine year olds from like 7 30, 8 to about 4. And then bus back to campus, work out from like 4 30 to 7 30 or 8. Yeah. And then just rinse, repeat. And that okay. schedule was like. Even though it had very little to do with yeah. football during the day, when we got back and we're still expected to be putting on a, a, a real good effort for in the weight room and then at, at the field for conditioning, I was like, okay, this pretty is exhausting. pretty real. Yeah, yeah. so as interns, uh, our kind of schedule is 8.30 to 6 p.m. Yep. So it's, it's a little brutal in the office. And even though we're just like taking phone calls and literally cutting out posters like a kindergartner, uh, I'm so tired at the end of that. Yeah. Like I feel like I don't have the energy to work out, and so like, hey, it, it's rough. It's rough, but yeah, it's 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 a little easier when you got the other guys with you. But yeah, there are definitely right. some days where you're like, man, I, I'm gonna really have to buckle yeah. down to get through this. And so, what was like the first, or maybe what was like the first big game for you? Yeah. And maybe like what plays did you have in that? Uh, first first game that I started um, was our fourth game of the year, my freshman year, against Dartmouth. Um, Dartmouth. Okay. And, and so, just to back up for a second, yeah, the yeah. Ivy League term was actually started for sports, right? You know what? I wish I knew the answer to that question, okay. but I don't. Well, I'm just going to go on an assumption here. I think that the Ivy League like coin name that everyone calls all these schools now was based off of a sports league association in like late 1800s, early 1900s. And so you were kind of like, I guess part of the original like Ivy League name. So oh. just, that's just The more you know. Yeah. Um, good, good deal, okay. But uh, so you're going against Dartmouth. Yeah, so we're playing against yeah. Dartmouth. Uh, it's a team that, that we have had a kind of series of mixed results again uh, against overall. I do want to take a quick sec. Yeah. If this if, you know ever airs, to say rest in peace, to Buddy Tevens, he passed okay. away okay. literally either yesterday or the day before that. Okay. Um, and okay. yeah, he was. Uh, we didn't necessarily like have a great relationship with their staff, but like yeah. have a ton of respect for him, what he did for the Ivy League, what he did for football, yeah. uh, and knowing some of the guys who played for him, he was clearly a great guy. So yeah. want to call that out. Um, okay. But we played Dartmouth. We had a tough, uh, a tough couple of years playing against them. And my freshman year, we were at this point 0 and 3, and got shuffled in because our left tackle got hurt. And so started to play the whole game of left tackle. Yeah. And rainy game, playing in the Yale Bowl, so really muddy, slippery ordeal. Yeah. And it was our first. Uh, it was our our first league game. We. Dartmouth is always. Oh, I guess Dartmouth's actually week three. I don't know. I'm gonna need to get fact checked on that. No, Dartmouth's week four. Okay. Um, so we're playing Dartmouth week four. Rainy. We're 0 and three. Morale not exactly the highest. Yeah. Uh, and the the DN that matched up with me for most of the game was a guy who had a little cup of coffee in the NFL after oh, okay. um, after his playing career was over. Falaren was his first name. Canadian guy. So huge guy, I'm guessing. Yeah, he wasn't very tall. He was about 
5'11", 6 foot, but okay. he's about 250, like 5% body fat. Jeez. Like very, very, very athletic, very strong. Yeah. And he definitely, he did me in a couple times, but I uh, I had the, the weather and the slippery ground working on my side a lot of the time, which okay. is lucky. Nice. Yeah. So uh, what was your biggest rivalry in college at Yale? Who was like the team that y'all would get prepped you would mark it down in your calendars. Yeah. Um, everybody knows, well, not everybody. A lot of people know about the Harvard game because it's tradition, last game of the year, put 60,000 people in the stadium. Yeah. Uh, we had, we always look forward to the Princeton game every year. Princeton, uh, yeah. I think there's some differences between the way that our program coaches and players yeah. uh, think about the game think about competition that uh -huh. makes for a really interesting and, and emotionally charged dynamic when we play each other yeah and so they also they also stomped all over us my freshman year uh, and so there was always like extra 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 little something going into those yeah. games in week nine of the season and so were there any like what was your best play in college would you say or your best game like filling up the stat sheet, that sort of thing. Yeah. It's hard as, a, as an offensive lineman to, like, really delineate between uh -huh. what a great game is on an individual level because, yeah. like, as far as my memory goes, right, like, there's reps you win, reps you lose, but those all get clouded by the yeah. team's result. Yeah. And, like, nobody really cares about how many pancake blocks you have or yeah. how many knockdowns you have if you don't win the game. And so if I had to put a finger on a – you know, singular best game. I'm not even sure I could because it, it all comes down to like how many yards did we run for. Like those yeah. are the things that are okay. important to me. Okay. Um, but in that regard, like in a game we lost against Fordham my freshman year, I think we, we ran for about 400 yards almost. Um, okay. Any game where we racked up over 300 yards on the ground and got a win yeah. was a really positive experience okay yeah and you said you knew ryan as well, right? yeah so ryan is uh ryan and i actually i don't think i've met face to face outside of maybe like a high five or a handshake okay um but i watch him play on tv every saturday now he's yeah. a great player yeah um and he was he was our best receiver in high school and yeah took us to we won our state championship with him as our top receiver so yeah, yeah I mean, he's, he's got a great career ahead of him yeah. for sure let's yeah. do all the young guys who are there now um and then so maybe overall like were you happy that you played at Yale compared to like like could you ever see yourself playing in like the SEC or the ACC or some big conference like that or was the Ivies are you happy with that yeah uh you know the there were some schools from those bigger FBS conferences that I've thought about going to when I was in high school but um, I, I wouldn't change a single thing okay. um, no matter what like I got my best friends for life from awesome. that experience and that's yeah. what matters the most and you still go back to that program yeah now, right? yep I'll be up there in uh, three weeks and then I'll be up there in four weeks back to back weekends um, and I'll, then I'll get back up again for the Harvard game okay. Coach Reno Coach Reno and his staff work closely with my current company, uh, yeah. McChrystal Group, and yeah, right. I'm super lucky to have that relationship. And nice. you know, a lot of guys on the East Coast in my alumni class, so we all try yeah. to make it back pretty often. Sweet. Um, well, so now, do you ever like? Do you still tune in to Yale games? Like, oh, every Saturday. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Absolutely, nice. and we've got the full. We've got our 25, 26 guy group chat going nice. my whole graduating class almost every Saturday. That's awesome. Yeah, very lucky. Um, and one more thing, were you part of the Skull and Bones group by chance? I no, guess. no, but if you if you look up Devin Moore from my class of 2020, yeah. he is the football guy in, okay. in Skull and Bones. Heard some interesting stuff about that, so just had to throw that out there. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, they're all rumors to me. I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, Sterling, thank you so much. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the little Blitz interview right here, and where better else to do it than the Capitol. So. Really? Thanks, Sterling. Appreciate it, and uh, go Bulldogs, I guess. Yes, yeah, thanks, man. All right.